Hi, uh, this is a series of interviews looking at geolocation and the applications for that technology. Um, it's a technology with enormous potential in a myriad of companies and applications, and uh, we're calling this series The Power of Where. And I have an expert here, uh, Niall Looney. Niall is Operations Director with Foresight Networks. They're based in Limerick. It's a company that has very successfully leveraged the power of geolocation. Niall, great to see you. Thanks for coming today. Hi, John, and hi to okay. all the listeners. Thanks for having me. Very good. Uh, I, so I was, I was reading about uh, Foresight, and it's a, a fascinating story. So wh why don't you start by telling us something about the company, how long has Foresight been in operation, what size are you now, uh, and how long have you been with Foresight? Yeah, so I suppose we've started out in, in 2002, uh, quite, a, quite a while ago now when we look back at it. Uh, originally started out uh, up a lane within Innes with uh, just a handful of engineers uh, focusing on the, the telecoms business at the time and also traditional civil engineering um, and building. And we now employ 180 people uh, we've, and we're based in actually Limerick, Dublin, Wales and Slough is, is where we our, our offices. At present, so quite a quite a, a big uh, jump in headcount. Um, this time last year, we actually had a, a hundred people working for us. So we we've, we've added eighty people over the, the course of this year, and that's not taking into account as well the, the fact that we were acquired by a by a company in based in Wales, Indigo Telecom Group, last December, and they've uh, headcount of two hundred people. So combined, we total of just under under the four hundred at the moment. Um, and again, we've been, we've been quite busy, thankfully, over the last number of months. The, the telecom space is quite active uh, in both wireless and, and fixed line. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've, uh, we've a busy pipeline in front of us for the foreseeable future, all going well. So, and what do you actually do then? Yeah, so we provide, uh, provide engineering services to, to telecommunications operators, infrastructure owners, uh, the likes of Vodafone, Syro, um, both in the, in the wireless. Listen, fixed line space, Celnex, Sport Mona, 2RN, which is uh, the, the infrastructure owning part of, of RT, for example. Then in, in the UK, we work with the likes of City Fibre, Community Fibre, um, the, these types of companies. So quite a, quite a diverse client portfolio, um, but again, all focused on, on telecommunications. Very good. And, uh, and we're calling this series of interviews the power of where, you know, how geolocation technology is helping business. So. So how do you guys use kind of geolocation then? Yeah, well, I suppose knowing, knowing where we are, it's a, it's a simple something thing is, is quite important for, for our business, given the fact that we have quite a dispersed workforce be, before, uh, you know, working from home became, a, became the, the traditional thing to do, so to speak. Um, we've got a, a huge field survey team across both Ireland and in the UK. Um, so that, that it's important like in terms of them being able to gather their information and transmit it back to the, the design office that they have the, the best tools to do that efficiently. And that, that's really where we, we've started embracing GIS technology and, and the, the live systems information that products like ArcGIS can, can provide. And, how, and where do you use it then or how do you actually use it for what kind of applications? Is it just mapping or is it more than that? It's it's a mixture of mapping and it's a mixture of mapping and also gathering information in the field for our clients' uh, networks. So be, again, be that wireless or, or fixed line. And um, we first actually started using uh, the ArcGIS products back um, over five years ago now, certainly. And it was on the wireless side of the business is where we first uh, started gaining familiarity with them, specifically in relation to our structural engineering calculations and exercises that we do to provide, I suppose, efficient structural engineering solutions on a very site specific nature. So, you know, when we're trying to consider local terrain profiles, shading, wind speeds, etc., we use our GIS in order to, to calculate those factors quite quickly and, and accurately. And sure. then as a, as a result of that, um, we had an opportunity to, to get into the fiber business. We originally actually cut our teeth in the, in the wireless uh, part of telecoms. And then uh, over five years ago now, we, we started getting involved in FTTH um, 
And when we first actually got involved in that space, we saw quite a lot of opportunity, I suppose, to change the norms in some ways as to how information was gathered and how workflows were conducted. And at the time, we, we, it was quite, we saw that it was quite a paper-based, traditional uh, approach that was taken um, in terms of, you know, a design office would produce paper-based designs, send them out to the field, they'd be marked up, and, you know, these would be huge, you know, A1 a pieces of, of paper like you would have on a, on a traditional site environment. Um, so again, we, we just, you know, that wasn't practical. We felt there was better ways to do that. And at the time we set about, you know, again, we're, we're looking at, we have quite curious and, and innovative engineers working with us, always looking at how we can do things better, more efficiently, how we can leverage new technology opportunities, again, be that, Drones is is uh, is a big one for us as well at the moment. We've got quite a number of, of qualified drone pilots now, um, and at the time it was it was how we could leverage GIS platforms and and uh, PDAs essentially or iPads so to, to 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 make the workflow more efficient. And we we looked at a number of different products uh, in the the market at the time, and we looked at what it was we needed to do for our clients. And we, we tested a couple of different uh, scenarios and looked at our own workflow and how we could sync you know, all these different factors, how we could sync them yeah. together. And we, we landed really on the, the ArcGIS platform as having the, I suppose, the credibility and the scalability um, to be able to do what we needed to do and to hold uh, the amount of information that we needed to, to gather safely, securely as well, and to be able to share that easily with our with other stakeholders like our like our clients, um, so eventually we we set about developing a, a workflow called Force Survey, and that incorporates in some of the ArcGIS uh, and the Esri tools like Collector, Survey One Two Three, etc. And we amalgamated and developed those in conjunction with uh, with some of the Esri in-house uh, technical experts as well. We know quite a, a big GIS team actually ourselves working on this. Um, and you know we're we're we've a throughput of about 70, 75,000 premises for for survey and design a month at present. That's just and that's just in the fiber space alone. So and that that's covering again a big geographical footprint in both both Ireland and the UK at present. So you're you've got heavy uh, kind of IT resources, I guess, within the company. And do you need something like that to use a a platform like ArcGIS? I mean, and what kind of support? <laughs> Did, did you get from your supplier? Yeah, well, it, again, it depends on what uh, you're looking to do with the, with the product. Mm -hmm. Obviously, at the beginning, uh, we were gaining familiarity with it. Again, I go right back to the, the days when we took, first took, uh, took a license in relation to the wireless uh, and the structural engineering items. We got really good support there from uh, our account manager at the time um, and one of the, the technical engineers in Esri that helped us set up the workflow and, and start to just understand the, the tool really and gain familiarity with it. And then over time, again, as our needs expanded and as we developed our own internal service offering, we increased our, our GIS expertise in-house. But again, we've really good, good collaboration uh, with, the, with, the, with the profession services that, that Esri are, are providing also. So it's, it's a combined approach, but again, as we've, we've grown and developed, we, we manage a lot of it in-house now. And, and I suppose there are a lot of com businesses that are looking to harness this kind of geolocation technology, I guess. What advice would you give to them if they wanted to explore this a bit more? Well, start, start uh, from first principles, I suppose, is, uh, is, is an approach that we generally take to, to everything, again, coming from a, an engineering background. See, and understand what is it you're you're trying to achieve. You know, ultimately, what are you trying to do? Be it for the business, or is that driven by your client's needs and requirements? Um, we'll always put that kind of front and center in terms of anything we do. You know, what value can we drive for our clients? Because ultimately, that's what's going to to lead to expanding service offerings and opportunities. And then, like I suppose, you know, it's a case of looking: Do you have the expertise in house to execute what that vision and that that objective is, or do you reach out and rely on on some professional services or support from from Esri? And then, ultimately, are you trying to implement these, you know, new workflows or strategies in a greenfield environment where you know you're going to get good buy-in and and it's it's going to be it's going to be relatively straightforward to, to implement? 
or are you try, are you shaking up and disrupting or stamp <laughs> systems and processes that you know you may meet some resistance standard standard change control i suppose issues and and uh, challenges yes um, and then it's a case of yeah the, believing in what you're doing and, and pulling the trigger um, and away you go but yeah that ultimately we uh, found that the the platform that we're using, like again, we have a lot of different uh, project types of different scale, different complexities, different densities, even in the the fiber space. Like we're working in rural environments and urban environments, so very very different infrastructure profile types. But we're you know again uh, we're able to, to adapt the, our workflow, the platform as part of that as well to be able to to provide the, the information we need in a, in a timely fashion. Pretty impressive. So where, what, what next then for Foresight? Uh, what does the f future look like for you guys? Well, digitalization, I suppose, is a, is, is a key pillar of, of our business at the moment. Again, as part of our acquisition by Indigo Telecom Group, we're, we're now about six months into the, the execution of a, of a growth strategy program. And digitalization is, is a key pillar of that. So again, uh, the whole Esri ecosystem and ArcGIS system is, is wrapped up in that. And that's gonna that's gonna be really important, even in you know it was important before COVID, but more important now, being able to, to digitize uh, operator owners and and uh, network infrastructure owners, platforms and environments, and easily being able to interrogate and see information in a in a live fashion. That's that that's going to be really important. Um, we we have a really good uh, products. Um, in, engaged in that space now at the moment where we're able to integrate Revit and BIM models into the, the ArcGIS platform to, to provide some real situation awareness to, to network infrastructure owners and operators. So yeah, pretty pretty cool stuff, I suppose. I That's think. fantastic. That's really great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 From small start in Ennis to, uh, to, to, the, to the world. It's, a, it's an amazing story, actually. Great. Well done.